Hey guys, it's Tim McCamus. Gonna go over some stuff with you tonight at the shop. We've been working on videos on fabrications and some different techniques and some different things that we do to, to fabricate here in the shop. What we're gonna touch on now is we're gonna start on a series of, of videos that are gonna involve uh, the welding portion. So you've got all your tubes fit or you got some of them fit. You're ready to weld or you're ready to tack the stuff together. So you're like, now what do I do? So I wanna give you a little bit of a heads up. This video is gonna be a basic intro into the type of um, welding that we do and the type of welders that we use. So uh, you guys might've heard of um, like a MIG welder. Um, so that's an MIG MIG welder or a TIG. So there's, so there's MIG and TIG are two common type of um, welders. So MIG stands for uh, metal inert gas, which is basically a wire feed. Wire feed welders are, are great for lots of applications. They're especially good if you're building like a mild steel chassis or something, putting a roll cage in your car, or some mild steel brackets on something like that. You know, the wire is gonna come down the torch head with the gas and it's gonna arc when it hits the metal and produces a very nice bead, but TIG welding is much more concentrated in a, a much more narrow heat band and not as much filler rod. So a TIG welder is, uh, that stands for tungsten inert gas. So it requires a little more skill and a little more, um, uh, definitely a higher end welder to do that with. So what I have behind me is just, this is one of our TIG welders we have in the shop here. We have a bunch of these Miller welders and all different variations. This is a little simpler model here. So I wanted to start out with this because it's, it's basic and it does um, everything that you need it to do. It will produce a fantastic weld. Um, th these machines are solid. This one here is probably at least 26 years old, 27. We've had it for a long time. They work perfectly. They never give you any trouble. Um, everything we have is Miller welders in the shop. We really like their, their welders, so that's what we use. But um, So this is a TIG welder. So with uh, different than a MIG, with the, with the TIG, you're going to have to have a, your torch is going to have the heat source in it, and you're going to have to apply the fill rod with your other hand, where the MIG welder the roll of wire is in the machine and it feeds down through the torch and it feeds itself out so you can hold it with two hands and kind of make that weld and control the puddle. But with a uh, TIG, you're going to have to heat the metal up and apply the welding rod to the puddle as you go down and make the, um, the weld bead. Okay, so just going to go over some very basics of this machine. Um, obviously, you got your power source where you plug it in, but um, you've got your, uh, you got a bottle of argon here. And so you've got a, uh, a regulated flow meter on the top of that there. So depending on what size uh, torch head we have and what size cup we're using, we're going to set that flow meter to around uh, probably anywhere from 15 to 25. Um, smaller cup, uh, less flow, larger cup diameter, you'll need a little more flow. So the, so the argon is what's coming out, and that's called a shielding gas. So when you weld the... Um, the, the, while the weld is being done and while it's cooling, it needs to be shielded with an inert gas. And that's what we're using here is argon. So that's an inert. So you're gonna make like a little argon cloud over that weld as you're moving along. And that will let the weld, um, that will let it cool without getting any impurities in it. And it'll keep it protected as it's going through its uh, cooling process, okay? So if you tried to do it without any shielding gas, all it would do is spit and sputter and it would not produce any type of usable weld. So we got our gas. Um, we've got a, uh, this has a foot control. So um, all of our welders use a foot control and uh, this controls the contactor and the, the amperage. Uh, so it's variable. So the contactor, it'll click on when you step on it and then the amperage will be controlled by the, the d pedal compression. So all the way down will be 100% of whatever you have the machine set to. So besides the foot control, you've got a ground clamp um, and then you have your uh, torch, which is right here. And so this is your torch head. This is a Weldcraft WP9 torch head and it's got a, uh, this is a, a gas shielded lens on it or a cup. Um, and this is the tungsten right here. So this is the cup. This is the torch body and this is the tungsten, this is the cup, and then this little item back here is what is used to hold the, the tungsten in. So this is a collet, there's a collet body inside here, and then this cap is what tightens that down. So it basically drives that collet down 
And so you can set the depth on that tungsten, how much you want it to stick out. See, I can just loosen that up and I can pull that out if I'm getting in a tight area. Um, somewhere about right in there is a good starting point. See, it's sticking out about three eighths of an inch or so. This tungsten's kind of dirty, so I've got some sharp tungsten here. You want a you want a nice sharp piece of tungsten. See the point on that is nice and sharp and smooth and as pointed as you can get. That'll make the uh, a nice quality weld. Now this tungsten, you can see this has been used. It's got a red stripe on it here. This is a two percent thoriated tungsten. Now we've got lots of different tungstens here because we've got different machines. Um, some of our um, inverter type machines use a hybrid type tungsten, which is uh, versatile for any machine. You can use a hybrid in a standard TIG welder or a inverter type machine. But this is a standard machine here, and we use a lot of this. Uh, this tungsten is very popular. So it's 2% thoriated, okay? And that, with a sharp point on it, is what we're going to start with, okay? So we've got our torch body, and so you're... Um, this has got a power cable in it, and it's also got a hose that the, uh, that the gas comes through. So the gas is coming down through here, coming out this cup, and it's going to make that little cloud over the weld as you're moving along. And that's the argon that's coming out of that bottle. So we've got all these items here that we need. So, so this plus the welding rod plus the foot pedal and a ground is what you're going to need to make that weld. Okay. So we're not going to do any welding tonight. We're just going over some basic stuff. So if you look at the face of the machine, just want to go over a couple of things with you here. So um, real quick settings, I'll go over some of this stuff. Some of it we'll do a little later, um, but uh, just the, the very simplest part of it. So you've got to select your, um, your output. So if we're welding uh, 4130 or steel, we're going to choose electrode negative, okay? And what that means is um, this, our torch, our electrode, is going to be on the, uh, the negative side. And that is done to, um, so what that'll do is that's going to put about a third of the power through the torch head and about two thirds of the power through the work back into the torch. So, so the, the work will be positive and the torch head will be negative. And the reason that's done that way is to keep this from getting too hot because you've got to hold this thing and handle it so you don't want it to get real hot. So we're going to, for, um, for steel, for 4130 or any kind of mild steel or anything, we're going to use electrode negative. If we were welding aluminum, we'd flip it over here on AC. We don't use electro, uh, electrode positive. So AC for aluminum, electrode negative for steel. So up here you've got, uh, this is your amperage control, amp adjust, and so this is zero amps and that's 125. And this is a, a synchro wave 250, so this will go all the way up to about 300 amps. So this, whatever this is, is gonna be 100% of your pedal. So if you compress the pedal, it will start out at 0%, and as you compress it more, it will go all the way up to what you have this set at. So if we have it set at 125 amps, 100% compression on the pedal would be 125. So that is used on based on how thick a metal you're um, working on and how much you're comfortable with uh, compressing the pedal. So uh, you really don't want to set it at 100% because then you've got to hold the pedal down fully all the time. You don't really have any adjustment. You want to be kind of in the mid-range of that pedal on the amperage. So if you want to stay around uh, 50 or 75, you set it at 125, that'll put you about mid-pedal on compression for the amperage adjustment. Um, so uh, we've got some other stuff on here. So you've got a, a post-flow time which is basically how long the gas flows after you let off the contactor. And you want some post flow because number one, it keeps your tungsten uh, cool and it also keeps the weld cool down. You don't want the, the argon to shut off immediately when you let off of the pedal because it will discolor the weld and it'll discolor the tungsten and it doesn't let it cool down properly. So this is real easy to set. So if you've got 332 second tungsten, it's got a kind of, kind of a range here of eighth inch tungsten, 530 seconds. So you can just kind of put that on the size of tungsten that you have, or you can put it a little higher. We run a little higher, so that's got 330 second tungsten in that torch head. So we're gonna run this up here just a little bit over that. Um, some of the controls, we're not using the AC balance here. We're not using that because we're not welding AC, but our amperage control here, you can see it's flipped to remote, which means that I'm gonna use my amperage control at the pedal. So I've got a remote. If I flip it here, 
then my amperage control is on the panel. So we're going to do remote. My contactor is the contact that makes it start the weld. So I've got that remote also because I want my contactor to be on the pedal. So I've got that set on remote. And uh, high frequency is the, is the ability to help start the weld. So um, on steel, on 4130 or any kind of mild steel, you want to just have it on a start mode, which will give you a high freak just when you strike the contactor so that it gives it a high frequency zap to get the arc started. Um, if you're welding aluminum, we're going to put that on continuous because we want a continuous uh, high freak while we're welding aluminum. Okay, so we're going to weld steel, so we're going to have this on start only. A couple of these other adjustments we're not going to use, so we're not going to go over that, but this is the basics of the machine, your amperage, your post flow, um, your output selector, and then your control here. So once you're comfortable with that, you'll be ready to start welding. Now, um, a, lot of, a lot of guys are scared of TIG welding because they don't understand it, and it's really very simple. It's a, it's a, it's a process that's been around forever. And you know, the biggest thing is um, people get frustrated with it because you have to practice, okay? It's, it's not easy to do. Um, our guys do it every day, so it's just kind of second nature to them, but um, if you guys have a welder and you, and you set it up and you just practice, you can get good at TIG welding and you can get, um, you can get a really good experience from it. If you take your time, you can, you can watch some videos on YouTube, you can watch some stuff that's out there that's, that's good you know, techniques and stuff. And we're gonna get into some of that later. So after we do this intro on the welder, we're gonna start getting into some of that and how, how we tack these pieces together and how we weld it and what rods we use and what, what components are necessary to make a nice quality weld. But the biggest thing is, is you can't be scared of the process because it is a little bit, um, it is a little cumbersome. So if, I'm gonna grab a piece of fill rod here. So, um, so when you're welding with this, you know, you've got to um, hold the torch and get your puddle started. And then as you go along, you have to feed it rod. So you can see this process is kind of tedious. And it takes some technique not to stick your tungsten into the puddle or stick your rod or get the puddle too hot or too cold. And it really just takes practice. Everybody always asks, what's the best way to get good at TIG welding? And you just have to practice. You have to practice and practice and practice and practice. And you can't TIG weld for a couple of days and then come back six months later and pick it up and expect to be good at it. I mean, you have to do this. To, to MIG welding is much simpler to, to learn, and there's a, there's a lot of things out of the process that you're not controlling. So it's easier to produce a quality weld. But for us, for, for the chassis that we're building and the, and the ratings that we need to meet, we have to TIG weld them. And there's nothing to be scared of once you know all the basics of the components and, and how to do it. Um, you just have to sit there and practice. You have to put in the time and you have to perfect your technique. It's not hard. You guys can do it at home with no problem. You don't have to have a high dollar welder. You can get on Craigslist and find a nice TIG welder for you know, thousand bucks. I mean, they're, they're just, they're, they're out there. It doesn't have to be brand new. Anything like this, the synchro wave is a tank. I mean, it will last forever. It does a perfect job. I mean, it will, it will last way past your lifetime. So those are the basics of the welder itself. And uh, a couple other things you need, you're going to need some welding gloves, um, cause this is going to get hot. You know, you're going to be right down on the weld. <clears throat> so as you're doing this, you know, you're going to be welding like this. So you're gonna be right down on that thing. So you need welding gloves, otherwise it's gonna to get too hot to hold on to. And you're gonna need a good welding helmet. Uh, this is a auto darkening helmet. You can use a regular helmet with just a, a lens in it, a, a 10 or 11 lens is fine. Um, the auto darkening helmets are nice because uh, as soon as you, uh, you can flip the helmet down and it gives you like a, a tinted view of what you're working on. But as soon as you strike an arc, that little sensor right there picks up on it and then it darkens the lens. So these are really nice. They're a little more expensive, but you know, if you spend 150 bucks or $175 on one, you can get a really nice helmet. So, so and invest in a good helmet. A, a cheap piece of crap helmet is not good. The headgear doesn't work well. Uh, and you don't have to have the auto darkening. It's just really, really nice because you don't have to flip the helmet up and down all the time. 
you can continue looking at your work through the lens without um, uh, flipping the helmet up. And some of the newer ones even actually have a, a what they call like a grind mode, which um, will allow the lens to go clear before it goes tinted, before it goes dark. So you can have like a grind mode that will um, totally have a clear lens, but you'll still be protected from the grinding. So you need a helmet, you need some gloves, you need some welding rod. Uh, you can, uh, we did a, uh, a video already on welding rod selection. So you can, if you want to look that up and kind of go through that, it goes, kind of gives you a breakdown of what rod to use for what purpose and what size to use. So um, that'll be good as a follow up to this video. But we're going to, uh, now that we've got this, um, kind of the basics of this welder down, we're going to start with some real simple, um, techniques and tacking and running some short beads and showing you guys how to how to produce a, a, a nice quality weld.